the crew of EVPS Paranormal. Basically, I'm going to go through um, what we use uh, during a typical investigation, some of the equipment that we have, some of the stuff that we've built on our own. Um, just check it out. So the first thing that we use, we use a lot of, is this uh, Elfstone um, EMF detector. Um, <clears throat> basically, you have three settings, safe, caution, and danger. And on the back here, it tells you in the safe zone, it's 0 to 2.5 milligauss. Uh, caution is 2.5 to 7 milligauss. And danger is 8 milligauss or higher. So we feel like we don't need um, anything beyond this. Um, it'd be nice to have a K2 or something eventually, but um, you'll be able to tell about what you have with this. We, we don't need to know every single... Um, milligauss that we're getting it's just it's just not necessary it really isn't and this is like fifteen dollars twelve dollars something like that it's a very good beginner um piece of equipment um uh, very cheap very durable um we've had it for a really long time works perfect so that's not that's the first one that we take on every investigation This one is something that you've seen us use here recently. It is nothing more than a Radio Shack radio um, that we've hacked um, inside to basically sweep the AM and FM bands, whichever band that we choose. So essentially how this works is you turn it on, um, wherever the power is, right there, you turn it way right down here. And if you want it to sweep, all you do is you hold down one of these um, preset buttons here but before you do that see how you can switch between AM and FM um, right now this is on AM that's FM so if you want to sweep the FM band you can go up or down just hold down that button and once it starts going on the side here you hit the lock button and it just stays sweeping the whole time if you want it to stop you just hit the power button after you turn off the lock see and again you can switch it over to AM <clears throat> There's the AM band. Do the same thing. Sweep. We'll sweep down this time. So we'll sweep down. It doesn't really matter which one you do, and you lock it in. If you lock it in, it just continually sweeps. Um, any button you hit while it's locked in, it won't do anything. So you unlock it. it goes off. So that's it's pretty cool. Uh, we've had some mixed results on it. It's kind of like a. a more generic, um, if you will, spirit box kind of a thing. It it. I think there's results here, but it definitely takes a learning curve, and you have to really pay attention to, to what, you're, what you're doing when you're using this. This is a second device of one that we've already made one of. It's basically a rim pod. So I still have to solder this one and stuff. So what you do is you add, I forget which terminal here, but one of these two, you basically take and add your battery. Um, and I took out one of these capacitors. I forget which one. Um, I have to do a video on that one later. I have no idea which one. I have to kind of research it again. I can't remember. All this is, is a future kit. And <clears throat> it comes in like a, uh, this piece here is like opened up like a circle. I uh, use it to put on a door, door handle on one side when you lock it. Um, and then that way if any, any heat or anything comes on the other side of the handle that's touching this, the, the alarm goes off. 
Um, <clears throat> so we figured we could use it for investigations. It actually works pretty damn good. Uh, it's very simple, very easy to build, very inexpensive. I think this was like $7 for two of them uh, on eBay. And <clears throat> like I said, you just hook your battery up to it, which I've got one that's built, which uh, I'll go and grab that one real quick. So <clears throat> this is what it looks like when we get it done. Um, of course, we kind of you know, made our own little mark on it. Ram pod, UPS. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, I'll put a switch on it so you can, you know, tell what's what. Here's the same as this here. Um, <clears throat> the inside, uh, just a little bit of wiring, hot glue, uh, and the terminal for the battery. Now, this is where uh, everybody does it a little differently. I put our battery on the back of this cover. Um, again, we don't leave it hooked up all the time, so go ahead and hook it up so I can demonstrate what it does. So... See how right now it doesn't do anything touching it? When I turn it on, see how the lights come on right here on the side? Now I took the annoying little alarm off of it because it was very annoying having that on. Um, I didn't like the sound because the sound would always go on and off and it was just way too much. Let me get up here a little bit better. So you can kind of see what it does. I don't know if you can see it or not, it might be a little too much light. Battery is a little weak in here too, so um, it's not going to work 100% properly right now. Uh, I do need to get a new 9 volt. <clears throat> we replace batteries all the time, as, as you know with anybody that does uh, investigations. Uh, <laughs> batteries are, are zapped all the time. So that is basically um, how that operates. So I'm going to put this back together and then I'll put you back on. Okay, so we're going to get this out of the way now. The next that we have is just your regular, typical Kodak Easy Share camera. Uh, this particular model is the CX4-4310. Just an old camera I had. Um, so what we did, once again, was we hacked it to uh, do what we want. It's, a, it's our near-infrared camera. So <clears throat> what it does, and when it boots up here, I'll show you. Um, what it does is it creates a <clears throat> I'll just take a picture real quick so take a picture of that and then I hit the review here and basically it creates a near infrared image and it's pretty useful for um, seeing things that we can't normally see um, obviously, it's not a full infrared, and it's not a full spectrum camera or anything like that, but um, it's fun to play around with, and it does, um, we have had some good results on it. Uh, during a home investigation we had years ago, we actually um, caught a shadow um, on a couch or a piece of furniture. I don't remember what was sitting there. I believe it was a couch. Um, we caught the outline of a head. So... Uh, I'm pretty certain that's what it is. Um, you can check our website and um, check out and, for yourself and see see what you think. But pretty sure that's what it was. So pretty interesting thing. We take this every time too. This is one of our temperature probes. Um, real simple. If I can get the thing apart here. Uh, again, you put a uh, 9 volt in there, which I don't have one in here right now, but <clears throat> basically it's infrared. Um, you hold this down to take a temperature reading, and you point it anywhere that shoots out a laser beam, and it gives you a temperature right here. Um, you got a little light. You can go from Celsius to Fahrenheit, and I forget what the middle button is for. I don't really use it for anything beyond that, <clears throat> but very good, very cheap, very easy to use, uh, which is something that I'm all about. I don't want to confuse anybody trying to get... Uh, big hefty equipment that's really not necessary. So we take this every time as well. This is 
the one and only audio device that we have. Um, everything else that we capture audio-wise is either on a camera or our cell phones. Um, this is the only one that I've ever really liked. Um, it is a JWIN digital voice recorder. Uh, it's usually used for like dictation or whatever. It's you know kind of old uh, at this point, but um, I like it because it has the um, USB kickout where you can plug it right into the computer and download your files. Um, live review is very easy on here. The menus are just super simple. Um, nothing special. Just your typical, you know, easy device to use. We take this on every one too. So you got earphones jack up here, and I think there's a, uh, yep, there's a microphone port up there as well, where you can use an external mic. Uh, sometimes we do when it gets real windy, but <clears throat> I lost my wind sock, so uh, I haven't used it in a while. But very, very good, very cheap, very easy. It's like 30 bucks for this. This is something I'm actually very um, happy to have. Um, it is a EDI Plus uh, data logger. And as you can see, um, it does a lot of stuff. Um, I'm still learning how to use it, me and the team. Um, but basically it has humidity, barometric pressure, temperatures. Um, you have EMF, and this part here is for seismic vibrations as a geophone. I've never had anything as a geophone before, but we've used this several times now, and the geophone feature on it is incredibly helpful. Um, it measures pretty much anything going on around there. Now, we've mistakenly walked and things like that and got ourselves caught on the log itself, but uh, again, you just got to learn how to use it. This is a very nice addition to our collection. I will be taking this on pretty much everything we do. Nice digital readout. Uh, you can mark things. It doesn't really do anything until you hit the record, uh, which is right here. Um, but then you can mark like vibrations uh, and all this other stuff here. And it gives you a little readout um, depending on what you're using. Very nice device. Um, kind of expensive. Um, this was actually got given to me as a present, so I don't really know how much it costs. I just know it's kind of expensive. Um, once again, one of my favorite tools, upcoming anyway, to use. Um, I'm going to be using this a lot. Data Logger EDI Plus. This right here is your typical night vision monocle. Just simple. Um, obviously, we can't record anything in this, but, uh, you know, it's a helpful tool to kind of play around with and see where we're at, what we're doing. Um, so we've used this a couple times. It's actually fairly uh, fun to play with, but um, uh, it would be nice if we had some recording function on this, but obviously this isn't built for that. This is like a hunter's version, so um, picked it up pretty cheap, figured what the hell. And again, it's a nice addition. Um to have just to kind of tool around, see where we're at. This one may surprise you. Generic, basic, old Sprint cell phone. Nothing special. ZTE, or, yep, ZTE. Um, this was given to me a while back. Uh, we use this to record a video sometimes, which it's okay on video. Uh, but mainly we use it for audio. Works perfect. Again, you know, just your typical throwaway cell phone that nobody uses anymore. Um, this thing is, you know, very outdated. I think it has like Android 5 on it or something. You know, it's very old. Um, I got two or three of these. Uh, we place them all over the place. Again, don't even have to worry about what happens to them. If something happens, they'll just throw them away. You know, no big deal. Uh, but in the meantime, <clears throat> it does do the job very well. Great addition too. This is an EM pump. So basically what's going on inside here, and we'll take it apart for you real quick, and then I'll put you back on. Okay, so I took the back cover off. Here's what the front looks like. Whoops, upside down. Okay, got a button on the top basically on and off so that's um, off okay 
So, <clears throat> same setup as I had in the other, other device, the Future Kit. Uh, I just like to put the batteries on the back cover. And we will connect this up, see if it has any juice. I'm not sure that it does. Oh, it won't work anyway, because I just pulled that off. So, I have to resolder that piece. Actually, yeah, I have to resolder that piece. But basically what it does is you have um, near earth magnets or rare earth magnets or whatever they're called right here. Your simple motor. And what happens is when it turns, it creates electromagnetic field. So it creates um, something energy-wise for the spirits to draw from. Um, we set this down, use it quite a bit, as you can tell, it, <laughs> the wire and stuff getting pulled out here, you know, we beat it up pretty good, but, um, it's a very useful device for, um, very little money, really, I mean, if the case costs a couple dollars, you got maybe a dollar in the motor, and the switch come in a pack of, like, ten for three or four dollars, rare earth magnets, I mean, those are, what, three dollars for a pack of, like, twenty or something, I mean, very cheap. And then you just got your you know, run-of-the-mill whatever battery you want. You can put whatever connector you want on there. I mean, just whatever. I'm just not going to overcharge the the, the uh, motor here. So, um, very easy, very nice addition uh, once I fix it, of course. So, here's basically what we have as a setup. We, we get a generalized camera bag. Uh, this is one of our older bags. It has a lot of older equipment in it. Um, tape recorder, cassette tape. Um, an old temperature probe, the power cord for that. Um, on the sides here, we use stuff pins and knives and flashlights and things like that that we might need. Um, more cords over there on the side. Um, pretty much uh, run of the mill. Um, got some headphones in there, um, some cards, uh, things of that nature. So. Um, this is our older kit. We actually still use it from time to time, but it's a lot easier running on the digital stuff. So this gets left behind from time to time. This is our basic setup bag now. Everything I mentioned in there before just kind of packed tightly in here. Um, we usually throw, shove more stuff in here as we go. Um, but yeah, uh, the whole point of this was to show you uh, some of the things we're working on. Um, this thing, if we ever get it rolling here, is a infrared camera, which would be a nice addition. <clears throat> but full of problems. Um, have a second rim pod to build still. Uh, I will eventually get around to that. We throw in little cameras like this all over the place. This is an XQ 10 or 11 or whatever. Very cheap, very easy to use. Hit a couple buttons, set it down, done. The only thing you can't do is live review. So <clears throat> another phone that we actually take with us on investigations. So, um, you know, everything we do is uh, pretty easy and basic. Uh, you don't need anything flashy to um, investigate paranormal. Well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed looking at uh, our basic uh, setup. Um, any questions, comments, uh, things that you guys might want to see or something I've described on or whatever, just put in the comments down below and uh, we'll see what we can do to get it straightened out.